asked Betty, who's in charge of the Mission Possible, I said, I want to interview a witch doctor. And so I had a chance to interview him, and I shared how Christ changed my life. I said, Jacques, let me tell you something. I said, these spirits that you think you worship, that come to you to give you information and power, these are not gods, they are demons. I said, one day, Jacques, these spirits that you think you control through your voodoo, when they are done using you, they will seek to destroy you and discard you like garbage. I said, the only one that can deliver you in that day, Jacques, is Jesus Christ. I said, do you want to pray to give your life to him? He said, no, but I do want you to pray for me, but I'm not ready to give my life to Christ yet. So we left, and Betty told me, you know, that after we left, no one had any contact with him. They totally shunned him. And Betty said this man was the meanest man she'd ever met and had killed more people. He was a killing machine in Haiti through his voodoo. So here we come back. And as soon as Jacques heard that I was coming, he came down to the compound and he saw Bob. Bob gave him a watch and gave him a little cross. And then David took Jacques and brought him to me. And through the conversation, he was talking about that he wanted to give his life to Jesus Christ. Now, I want to make sure, you see, I'm not one that just all of a sudden leads someone to Christ without them realizing what they're getting into, especially someone like a witch doctor. You know, he's got several women. He's living with kids of different women. He's involved in all kinds of different, you know, voodoo practices. And I want to make sure he realizes what the cost is and what it means to give your life to Jesus Christ. So I said, listen, Jacques, we're going to come up to your house tomorrow. We'll have Bible study together. And there we are up at his, up at his little hut. I'm sharing with him the gospel. Outside the hut, people from the village began to gather around. They're looking in the village hut. And I get ready to leave because I don't want to push salvation on Jacques too fast. And I get ready to leave the hut and say, Jacques, I'll be back tomorrow. We have more Bible study tomorrow. He calls me back. He says, I want you to pray for me. So this time I said, listen, you know, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to get into this. And the Holy Spirit begins to fall. One thing that everyone there witnessed was they'd never seen an outpouring of God's Spirit so powerful in their life. And I began to proclaim in prayer the power of Christ being greater than the power of voodoo. I began to pray a prayer of renunciation of voodoo practices. Jacques is repeating everything after me. The people around the hut are beginning to get agitated. The village is beginning to get up into an uproar. I begin to leave again after that prayer. I say, Jacques, I see you tomorrow. He calls me back. And this time David and Bob are with me and, and the girls are outside. He takes us into this little inner room. And in this inner room, he lights a candle. And all his voodoo paraphernalia are in this room. And he begins to get a basket and begins to gather all his voodoo items up. We did not tell him anything to do. The Holy Spirit moved on this man's heart. He began to spontaneously move in this direction. No hype, no emotionalism, no trying to set this up. Jacques got them all, took them out there. They started a fire. Now the village people were gathered around. Karen and Tony and a few others saw two men run over with machetes. One guy got a lead pipe and they said they were agitated. Their eyes were like fire. Their nostrils were inflamed. But they had prayed a wall of protection. God's spirit was so powerful, I could care less whether we lived or died because God's presence and his power was so overwhelming. The people were gathered around and God just gave me a message. I just began to proclaim. I said, this day you may wonder what happened. I said, this day the God who created the heavens and the earth has revealed himself to Jacques the witch doctor, and he's given his life to Jesus Christ. And I challenged them to do so. And I raised my hand in commitment. Everybody simultaneously and spontaneously raised their hand. And almost all of the women, all of the children, and several of the men raised their hand to make commitment to Jesus Christ. And after I was done, I looked and I saw several men with the most evil, hateful look. And I knew they would probably try to kill Jacques. I said, listen. I said, Jacques had courage this day to give his life to Jesus Christ. I said, I hope you have the courage to do so. I said, tomorrow I come back. We have Bible study. I want you to be here. They nodded their heads and said, we come. And the next day after we came back, they were there. We went split into teams of three and went into the villages and began to minister to the people. And God did an amazing thing there. And Jacques came to all the Bible studies there at the mission compound. They watched the Ten Commandments. On video, when God parted the Red Sea, you heard these Haitians just cheering, and Jacques was watching intently. He shared his testimony, and two different Haitian pastors said they would disciple him, and our group decided to support him through the mission compound. And the only hope for Haiti, the only hope for the world, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, this gospel must be preached to all the world, and then the end shall come.